So welcome, 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 our beloved sister Ama. We so appreciate your consistent and visionary leadership on behalf of so many in our community. And as always at Setsi, we give thanks for our creator. We acknowledge all the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge our ancestors. We acknowledge all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So Amma, can you please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and share a bit about your remarkable work? Yeah, thank thank you so much, Victor, for having me. Um, always a privilege. I think I always learn a thing or two whenever we get on a call together. Um, so yeah, my name is Leticia Amma Diawu, and I am the executive director of Sea Change. Um, it's an international organization working in 11 countries, actually 12 uh, when we add Ghana this year, um, on uh, uh, food sovereignty starting with seeds. So our focus is on seed security um, uh, for all and uh, farmers' rights uh, first and foremost. So we have uh, projects in East Africa, West Africa, Mesoamerica, Latin America, and then one uh, nation uh, called Timor-Leste in Asia as well. So really our focus is on seed sovereignty for rural farmers, indigenous people, and, 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 and everyone. That's incredible. And your work spans decades. I'm not trying to date you around the same age, but <laughs> you're doing this work. And it's inspired me so much. As you know, my wife has been entrenched in this work for a long time. So being able to build with you around this just makes me, always brings me so much joy. So, so my next yeah. question is, what inspires you most about your work? What has you curious? What's lighting your, your fire right now? Oh, I think honestly, I will give you an example where I was in Tanzania in, and, and I won't try to butcher the name of the village we were in, but I got to meet all these amazing women, women leaders in their own right, women who have been stewarding uh, the lands that they're on, who have been providing um, and nourishing really their communities for, for generations. And um, that's what inspires me, just being in the community, seeing these um, Black women who are doing uh, the bulk of the work, you know, of protecting our biodiversity, women who are stewarding seeds, they're the, the holders, the caretakers, the guardians of, of seeds um, in our communities and just seeing them in action. And, and, and that's what really inspires me. I think in this work, going back to, you know, the film project that I'm working on about my grandmother, right? She inspires me all the time. The knowledge she holds about the land, um, about uh, food, um, and also her um, ability to speak truth to power, you know, um, is what keeps me going and inspires me in this work every single day. Ashe, ashe, ashe. So what challenges and barriers do you face in your work? And what are some of the approaches you're taking to overcome some of these challenges and barriers? Well, you know what, to be honest, I work in a non-for-profit sector, let's be real. <laughs> um, the moment you mentioned that, that's a challenge in itself, right? When you're trying to um, make systemic change, but from the perspective of non-for-profit, I think, you know, not just myself, but I think many people who work in this space knows the challenges of constantly having to chase after money. Um, that's always the barrier, right? It's, it's, it's the resources that's needed to do the amazing work um, in communities. It's, it's always going to be a challenge, not just for myself, but for many others. Um, I think, um, the other piece is, of course, going up against corporate power, like the work we do around farmers' rights and around seed sovereignty and seed security. We are, my work essentially is to protect, you know, our planetary health and our overall health as human beings. Um, and then you're up against corporates whose main interest is money, right? Your main interest is how much can we get um, uh, for this product that you've stolen off the backs of communities, right? It's, 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 it goes on and on and on and on. So that's always the, the challenge. But like I mentioned, I think the amazing women who, who are every day 
on the ground, toiling the soil, um, the resiliency, the resistance in them to continuously do that in spite of corporate control and corporate capture of our food system, um, I think is, is one way. I enjoy working in communities. I enjoy working with uh, Black women um, in this work. And I think that is the solution, right? To never give up, if, if that sounds cliche in any way, but to never give up no matter what, no matter the challenges, um, the insults, the whatever that comes your way, it's like knowing and believing that what you're doing is for um, our Mother Earth. Um, it's for our health, it's for our well-being in the long run. Ashe, indeed, I couldn't agree more. Um, I appreciate your leadership, your candor, and once again, your visionary leadership. So my next question is, do you have a set of key priorities right now in your work? Oh, uh, so many. I think, you know, I, I had the privilege of attending uh, COP28 in Dubai, um, the focus, of course, are around climate change, but food systems being now a big part of the conversation. I think in my brief blog that I shared, I mentioned about the fact that, you know, there isn't really much to kind of hold the powers to be with, but it's hopeful in a sense that this conversation at least is, is taking, uh, is being at the forefront. For me, a big part, um, a big priority for me is looking at sea security and climate change. I think that when we talk about farmers being resilient in light of the climate crisis that we're in, we forget that farmers need seeds, good quality seeds to do that. And it's not going to come from, you know, Bega, Monsanto, it's not gonna come from those corporate, those seeds they actually hold already in their hands. You know, it's just a little support to kind of um, push that work uh, a bit more forward. So really, I'm I'm interested in diving into the conversation around seed security and climate change, um, a bit more. Um, so that's a a big huge priority for me. I am hoping to organize a little um, I wouldn't call it a webinar, but a session to discuss seed security and and climate change, but from the framework of women, because women as the guardians, women as the the, the holders of 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 seeds within communities so really that's like one big sort of high priority for me um there's the uh, uh biodiversity conference that's coming up in colombia as well um i don't know if many people know but seeds is like a very very tiny or if it even ever makes into the agenda around biodiversity which is ridiculous to think about right like how can we talk about biodiversity loss and not talk about seeds and 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 seed biodiversity uh, and and the fact that we're losing you know our seeds at such astronomical uh levels so really it's just kind of continuously pushing um uh seeds and seed security um uh farmers right uh, farmers, uh, um, knowledge, indigenous people as, as knowledge holders at the very forefront, because we're not going to get out of this climate crisis if we don't listen to rural women, if we don't listen to indigenous people, if we, if we, if we don't do that and accept that they are at the forefront, then I think we will continue to, to, to be in the crisis that we're in. Indeed, I couldn't agree more. So my next question is, how do you feel about the future of seed sovereignty, seed security, agroecology in Canada and internationally? Um, you know, in Canada, the work is slow, right? Not many organizations even use the term agroecology. I think it's very foreign um, to a lot of people. But I think it's it's picking up slowly, but it's picking up in Canada. I think Canada, you know, um, Canada loves GMOs. <laughs> <laughs> how else? I don't know how else to put it. Um, and 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 it can be quite a difficult conversation when we have, you know, uh, our federal institutions very much entrenched, you know, in 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 this. So what I'm I'm really hoping for, um, in 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 terms of is how can we pick up some of these conversations a bit 
into the public realm and into the public sphere to really discuss that. Agroecology is really talking about the work our ancestors have been doing for generations upon generations. It's not new. It's not something the white man you know, brought from anywhere. It's something we have inherently been doing, just given a new terminology, if that makes sense. Um, so in, in, in that Canada sense, I think there are so many indigenous people, so many black farmers, especially in Quebec, like the black farmers in Quebec that are doing amazing work on sea security and, and food sovereignty that I think we really need to, to take a look at. Um, so that work is picking up. Is slowly picking up. So it's it's looking quite good. And it's the same globally, right? Like Sea Change as an organization, when we started in this work a few decades ago, there weren't that many organizations really looking at sea security. And now there are tons. Like we get requests from all over the world, Somalia, Uganda, you know, people that are interested in sea security work and really would like to partner with our organization to see how they can really build on what their community have been doing. So it, it's looking hopeful, but I think what we need is that coordinated effort from everyone so that we can push on the powers that be. The powers have all the resources in the world. What we have is the numbers, right? And, and there's power in the numbers in sort of bringing that collective together to look at how we can, um, you know, seriously uh, push uh, against some of the, uh, what I call the slavery laws <laughs> when it comes to food security and seed security and really look at how we can liberate ourselves and and and, and nourish uh, people. Ashe. So my second last question, what is your ultimate goal? What does success look like and feel like to you and your colleagues? Whoa, <laughs> that's, a, that's a really big one. Um, I think, you know, from a, a sort of a practical maybe sense, you know, we can look at a success as like, oh my gosh, look at all that new variety of like tomatoes or peppers or whatever that these farmers have now generated that now can be circulated um, within communities for communities to, to have access to. But I think most importantly, success can also look like when these farmers are able to influence their own government institutions to adopt their farmer managed seed systems, right? Um, and to ensure that then these seeds can stay within your community for them to be able to conserve, to share, you know, to be able to, to sow and grow and, and all of that. I think that is a huge success because we know that that is what long-term sustainable um, food security can look like. When farmers have that free access to their seeds that they're able to share um, um, and they're able to grow and, and, and share that food with their community. I think that's, that's, that's a huge success in itself without having to rely on, you know, external folks who are literally vultures coming into their communities to extract money and to extract resources and not really about their well-being in the long term. So I think that's that's what success could look like. Success, yeah, in, in many ways. I won't dwell on that too long, but that's, I guess, some of the ways that success could look like. Incredible, incredible. And I couldn't agree more. So my last question, do you have any closing thoughts or a call to action for our listeners and our viewers? Well, you know, I say to, to folks, um, I think from like the very small practical way to support your local farmers, um, small scale farmers within your communities is by shopping there, right? Um, it is, is by buying from, from that. But most importantly, I think sometimes we forget that as individuals, we have powers to call our local politicians and offices and say, hey, listen, these are issues that are actually important to me. Seed security is important to me. Seed security is a climate issue and, and it's tied very much to food security and food sovereignty. And these are the things that are important to me because a lot of politicians, when you talk to them, it's like, we listen to our constituents and you know, these are the priorities. Um, they don't hear from you. They don't hear that these are things that you're actually thinking about. 
it is important to make that call. It is important to send that email. You may think nothing of it, but think about everybody doing the same thing. You know, it's bringing that conversation to the forefront. And, and I think um, that's also other small ways other than reaching into your pocket and, and, and buying from our small scale farmers is that small ways because sometimes we forget the power that we have. And that one power of just picking up the phone and making a phone call or writing that email um, is important. Uh, in Canada, elections, and I think Canada and Ghana, um, or if I'm wrong on the timelines, election season, right? All these politicians, uh, this is the time they supposedly care, right, about uh, about us and our issues. So how can you take that opportunity to say, hey, listen, I care about seed security and climate change. And, and, and I think this should be an election issue because we are at a critical point. I couldn't agree more. In the entire history of modern civilization, this year there's over 40 countries going to the polls. That's more mm -hmm. than literally one third of the planets going to the polls this year. I think 41 countries mm -hmm. elections. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree mm -hmm. more in terms of government relations. And once again, as always, I so appreciate you. You have no idea, beloved. And yeah, since the day we met, uh, you've always centered justice, access, inclusion, diversity, and equity. You represent us so well, and you make our ancestors proud. So once again, I, I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. My family appreciates you, and continue to do the remarkable work that you're doing. And as always, thank at you. Thank you. And as always at Setsi, we close the way we began by acknowledging our creator, by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors. We acknowledge all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders, all those community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, fam. Thank you. Thank you so much, Victor.